Hello everyone, I hope you all are having a good day. It's been a minute since I've posted, but today in this little old video, we are going to take a look at the Happy Model Mobula 8. Essentially, this is a Happy Model baseline in a whoop frame. It still has the same flight controller options, the X12. It still has the same FPV camera and the Caddx Ant. It's running 1103, 11,000 KV motors. And it's got the Gemfan 2023 props. Currently, I see it listed in three different options. It's all analog, of course, at this time. We'll probably see HD versions in the future. It comes with Express LRS, FR Sky, and Fly Sky. Currently, I only see it available from MakerFire for $117. And I do have a coupon code or make a fire down in the video description. Of course, as always, if this comes to an FPV shop in your area, uh, please share that link to the Mobula 8 to that FPV shop. I'll link it down in the video description. Doesn't matter if it's affiliated or not. It weighs just a touch under 43 grams. And for your reference, the baseline comes in at just over 39 grams on my scale. And pretty close to what you expect, motor post and motor post, I'm getting about 87 millimeters. It does come with a control board, so you can change settings on that Caddx camera. We get an extra set of props, a little screwdriver, a few extra screws, and that uh, prop remover that's included with every kit that doesn't work. An extra canopy in case you break the one it comes with, and two sheets of stickers. I found that these two batteries did not fit the battery tray, but these two did. And if you put in a good size of battery that fits the battery tray well, it actually uses the battery for a little bit of frame rigidity. The camera protection is 3D print, and I found that when you do hit it, it will pop off because the screw heads just aren't quite big and flat enough. We're going to start with the outside flight because I think this is mainly an outside flyer. And if you look at that tree in the kind of the center, you can see it moving a little bit. But our wind is actually really, really low. I actually got a couple of days of real nice calm winds to fly this outside, which was a whole lot of fun. Uh, even with the little additional weight over the uh, baseline, the wind data... Six miles an hour winds, but there are probably some gusts that might get into double digits every now and again, but relatively calm. Those gusts didn't come up very often, and hopefully you can hear that with my flight camera, uh, with the flight audio that I include with the uh, video. Uh, the flight audio that you hear is not part of the goggles or the quad. Something to keep in mind, that's something that I use so you can uh, get a better feel for how the quad flies, how it sounds. Of course, uh, as in the case of all of my reviews, they have uh, been flown multiple times over the course of multiple days. So if the props sound a little weird, that yeah, would make sense because I've probably crashed a few times just like that and dinged up a prop, maybe turned a pitch a bit or turned a corner over and that can throw the sound off a little bit. If you're not familiar with the baseline, which is basically all the hardware components outside of the frame is based on, uh, I'll link that review down in the video description. Uh, you can watch that review. Uh, same space and same sort of flight style with the same person on the sticks, which you can see as I pass through uh, some of these different areas. That's me. So this would be for people who like that sort of 2-inch 2S flight, which I think is a very good combination. 2-inch and 2S has become one of my favorites, especially for backyard uh, flying around and having some enjoyment, some fun. It's quick, easy release. It's relatively safe because of low weight, small prop size, but gives you good performance still. But this one would give you the added security and or protection of having that whoop frame or prop protection, however you like to see it. I'm uh, not going to quite lock in that orbit. <laughs> it's always nice when you lock one in right away, but just didn't get it done there. And you'll kind of notice some different sort of flight paths that I'm taking. I didn't actually know that I'd be using this flight. I was actually just out flying. Um, I don't always fly every review product for review purposes. I just kind of go out and fly them and see what happens. Um, and I'm doing some exploration as far as kind of some punches up to try to see what I can see from above. And I think over by that outdoor living space, uh, depending upon how much that Japanese maple kind of fills out over the course of the warmer months, there's a potential for a hole there where I might be able to do something a little bit more fun and challenging. Uh, but it, you can go back and take a look at that. There's, Unfortunately, we've got that storage area behind there that also doesn't line up great with that hole. So I'm going to have to go at, at a bit of an angle. But back to the quad, it flies well. It's got a good tune on it. As I said, if you're HD, whether you're Walk Snail or HD Zero, potentially you could see something with the Vista Link in this, but I'm not certain about that. I fully expect there to be a digital version coming out relatively soon, probably a few weeks. Or if you just want to get the frame so that you can swap your baseline over to uh, a Whoop type frame, 
it should be out in a couple weeks. Typically, we see parts a couple weeks after a product launches. Now you can see there, I finished up the flight. Uh, 3 minutes and 14 seconds, I am using the RDQ525, which is essentially manufactured by GNB. Well-used batteries, though, um, and our flight time came in over 3 minutes. At some point in time during my flights, this happened. And that really was my most dramatic crash. Okay, this is just gonna be an inside sample because as I said previously, I don't think too many people would fly this inside a traditional home. You know, it's 2S, it's two inch, it's gonna feel pretty jumpy uh, just because of that power to weight ratio. Of course, if you've got the proper skills, you can fly it anywhere you want and you want to take on that challenge or have that sort of FPV fun. But I think if you're flying it inside, when we're thinking about traditional whoops and this particular quad, the Mobula 8, probably looking at really large commercial industrial sort of indoor spaces uh, warehouses gymnasiums uh, maybe even an office that's generally got an open design those sorts of indoor spaces are probably more largely viable but if you don't have the ability to fly in one of those spaces you probably need to stick to something a little bit smaller a little bit lower cell count 1s mainly uh, that's going to make throttle management which is a big hurdle when it comes to flying inside for most people Flying something that's got a smaller prop with a smaller battery or lower cell count, you'll find that the throttle management is a little bit easier. Matter of fact, here not my last video, I had the uh, Sub 250 Whoop Fly 16, and uh, I think that's a really good indoor trainer because of its frame durability, and also the throttle management won't be quite as challenging because it is 1S on uh, 1002 motors, as well as the weight of that Whoop isn't high performance. So it helps make throttle management just overall a little bit easier. But because I do fly whoops inside, had to give this one a go. I put about seven or eight batteries through this one. And uh, this was the flight with the longest segment of me not crashing it about the house. Um, I did have a crash that pulled, as I said, that little added camera protection they put on the end, which has got that, that red TPU print to it. And it did pop off. Uh, actually, it was this flight, uh, earlier in this flight, where it popped off on the front. I obviously resecured it down and uh, flew it much, much more. Um, I shouldn't over exaggerate that. Not much, much more. I just say flew it more. Uh, good, good long flight times because when you're inside in a tight confines, you really can't get that much speed, so you're not that heavy on the throttle, and therefore your flight time is going to be pretty good. Uh, we're going to see this flight come in at over four minutes with plenty of battery left over at the end, so you could fly even a little bit longer. But I think inside a house is going to be a challenge, but if you're already experienced in that and you want to take that on, knock yourself out. I'd never tell someone not to do the kind of fun that they're looking to have. I could probably adjust my battery warning further because my batteries are sagging a fair bit. Again, these batteries are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three years old. They've had hundreds of flights on them. Um, they're still doing a reasonable job of providing me a good amount of fun and flight time. Probably not the best for exact review purposes, but I've got some new batteries on the way. Graceful. So I had that big crash that I showed you between uh, the primary outdoor flight and the indoor flight. And I did damage the frame a little bit, and it makes sense that it's up front. Hopefully you can see that crack right there. Right, well, I moved the prop right there. There's a little crack. It didn't go all the way through. I did have a number of more flights outside as well as I didn't even start my indoor flying until I'd actually concluded my outdoor flights uh, just because I was taking advantage of the weather. Uh, no real other reason than that. Um, so it we, we, looks like about halfway. Traditionally on plastic frames, um, whatever the materials are to repair them, I use welder glue, which my current batch looks like this, but you can use E6000 or whatever you prefer. Uh, just put a slim coat on the inside because you don't want the props getting on there too much. Uh, you don't want to bulk that up, but if you can squeeze some in from the inside as well. And the reason why I like this stuff, and it's linked down in the video description from Amazon, is that it stays pliable so it doesn't dry like super glue and then make 
the next break somewhere else so you just continue to apply it all over the place. Been using this for years on Whoop frames. It's a good thing, in my opinion, to have in your toolbox for those repairs so you don't have to swap out entire frames or you don't end up with a frame that's been kind of band-aided together. Uh, hot glue just doesn't work. The next crash, the hot glue is going to pop off. It just doesn't stick well enough and it hardens. Um, plus, it doesn't go on all well. You can apply it thin, but this just works better, or E6000, use your preference. I mentioned this coming off, and this is that little flight segment where I had a crash, and the TPU print popped off in the front. Not a huge deal, but it does kind of show a weakness of the implementation of these the screw heads and their size. If we'd had a screw that has actually a bigger, wider, flatter head, the opportunity for this to pull off would be less. You may want to replace with your own screws if you have a smorgasbord of screws like I do uh, and replace that in the front and the back. These screws also aren't very long. And initially when I replaced this, you know, they're, they're probably like four millimeters long and I like to get six plus. So I get a lot of the screw down on the post. Many times, especially on smaller whoops that we're flying inside when we're crashing all the time, these posts that are holding our all-in-one flight controller can become weak spots, so I like to use a longer screw. Of course, that adds a touch of weight, so that's not for everyone. One other issue, it's a kind of a generalized tip, not specific to this quad or the, the baseline. If you end up with a motor where the shaft is slipping from the motor bell, there's a bunch of different fixes, but I think the easiest one is to just take some prop screws and screw the uh, prop right down to the motor and then you're back off to the races. You can do other things to help secure the motor shaft in the bell. They sometimes do get loose on various micro motors. Um, you just want to be careful about how much of whatever it is you're plying around the shaft. You don't want to get it down into uh, any potential bearings and you don't want it you know, coming in contact between the bell and the windings of the motor and just kind of making your performance all the, and decreasing your performance, I guess, is the, the best way I can put it. Uh, if you happen to not have the batteries that, that I have that fit, uh, you can also, you know, do a little DIY. There's always the opportunity in this hobby for that. Uh, you can clip these bottom uh, pieces off so you can get a bigger battery in. You can squeeze something between these two parts, then maybe use a strap uh, to go around and use this these two side pieces in order to hold your battery in here. I do think they needed to include a longer nosed USB cable because I found at least with my short nosed USB cables, I wasn't able to make a good connection with this downward facing USB port. Uh, and if you're wondering about that, it is this particular USB cable. I actually have a couple of them. Um, I don't have them linked down in the video description, but I find them on Amazon. You could probably search eBay, AliExpress, wherever you like to do that sort of shopping and just look for a long nose or long end uh, micro USB cable. Uh, this comes in really handy for these particular kind of instances. I would have liked to have seen Happy Model include this with the quad. Um, but if you've been around on this hobby, especially with micros for very long, you might have one of these already. It's interesting that we've got these holes out here in the frame. I, I don't know of a purpose for those. It just kind of draws my eye to it. I can't see there being a bigger canopy that would need that size a hole way out here. Um, so I'm wondering if that's just something to do with holding the mold as it's being made, or maybe they just decided to do that for weight purposes. I don't know. But I, I do think as far as the weight of the frame, you'll notice that this weighs more than obviously the original bat baseline. Now uh, the size of these struts, while there's not a lot, there's only four, they're pretty substantial. And, uh, you know, like I said, I flew about seven or ten packs inside the house and did quite a bit of wanging all over the furniture. Um, it, matter of fact, that flight I showed you inside, there were two crashes before we got to the segment I actually showed you. Uh, one of it being when this came off, but there was a, a number of those other flights that I talked about. You can see my prop right there potentially is creased because I've probably straightened it more than once and that's probably why the sound was off. I'll straighten it one more time before I uh, get done with the review here. But I think the frame's fairly durable and I would expect it to be out on the market uh, probably a few weeks after it launches. It may take some time. See, look at there, it even, because it's TPU and it's not real secure, it shifts, um, which it does provide some protection as you can see from that shot there. So the lens doesn't stick out but it's gonna be pretty minor. Don't depend upon that saving your bacon if you go headlong right into the camera. So it's a really fun combination, the combination that I do approve of, although I would prefer 1102 because it decreases our weight a little bit and helps with our overall efficiency, but it's got good pop, good power, just like the baseline does. 
and I think this is probably going to be for the select few that want that two inch 2S, but also want the added safety or that feeling of security and having prop protection on this. Might be a small group, but there's probably a group of you out there still yet. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.